Hello, it's Lisa from Mythical Witchery. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing part two of a three-part series on Halloween tarot decks. So today we're looking at the Halloween tarot and the trick-or-treat tarot. The Halloween tarot is quite an old, an old deck. It was published in 1997, so that makes it about 25 years old. I had this deck when it first was published and was not able to bring it with me when I moved to the UK, so I bought a new version of it. It is published by US Games. It's currently selling for around £20 on Amazon.co.uk and I think for about $25 on US Amazon, but don't quote me on that. This is a little bit harder to find, but there are independent sellers that have it. So you might have to shop around to find a good price on this. The Trick or Treat Tarot was published in 2022 by Llewellyn. I paid £29 and I believe it sells for, let's list it on the box, as $32 US dollars. So the Trick or Treat Tarot has a magnetic flip opening, which I really like. I'm inside the box. It's got quite a good sized guide. So it's quite a glossy stock on the book. It's 205 pages. And it is a full color book, as you can see. At the back, there are Halloween themed spreads, which is great. There's a four card trick or treat sp spread, a six card haunted house spread, a four card messages from the other side spread, a five card gathering the harvest spread, one card spreads, three cards, a seven card horseshoe spread, a seven card making a choice spread, and then it covers yes and no cards, as well as the traditional Celtic cross. So there are a ton of spreads in here. The descriptions of the cards themselves, you get a full color, full page copy of the card with quite a good write up, including keywords and reverse meanings. This is a fantastic guidebook. It's a bit of a, a glossy stock. Not terribly thick pages, but it's totally perfect. And at the beginning of the book, just talks about shuffling, how to do a reading, what kind of questions you can ask, basics. What is a tarot deck? So this is by Barbara Moore and illustrated by Jonathan Hunt. So now looking at the Halloween Tarot guidebook. And they just slide out like this. So the deck fits here and the guidebook fits here. This comes with a poster of the Celtic cross and folds out to quite a good size, as you can see. So kind of a fun thing to put on your wall if you like. This is the guidebook, got a glossy cover. Place for notes at the back, 136 pages. For the cards, you get a small black and white picture with a write-up, the divinatory meanings, and reverse meanings. They have a Celtic cross spread, three card spread, and that's it. For this deck, the suits are changed, and we'll look at that 
as we get to them. The names of the suits, I should say. Okay, so those are the guidebooks. So the cards themselves. Well, that's the inside of the Trick or Treat Tarot. And these are the backs of the cards for the Trick or Treat Tarot. The Halloween Tarot comes in a little tuck box, which is a little bit flimsy. And as you can see, I've already had to tape it on both sides because it tore quite quickly after opening it. It also includes a little white book inside. And these are the backs of the Halloween Tarot. So both decks have fully reversible backs. As you can see. As far as size goes, for thickness, these decks are virtually the same thickness. There might be a difference of one card, the Trick or Treat Tarot being possibly one card thicker than the Halloween Tarot. And actually, I think there are some extra cards here. Yeah, there's a Halloween Tarot card. Sorry, just talks about the meanings. And this one, yeah, there's no extra cards in there. So it might be that the Trick or Treat Tarot is about two cards thicker, as you can see. They're pretty darn close. Comparing this to the Rider Waite Smith, which is a standard tarot, you can see that the Halloween tarot is just slightly thicker, or wider rather, and not quite as tall. I'll measure them precisely in a moment. The Halloween tarot is almost exactly the same size. And for those who like precise measurements, Trick or Treat Tarot measures 69 millimeters wide by 117 millimeters high or two and three quarters wide by about four and five eighths high. The Halloween Tarot measures 70 millimeters wide by 120 high, which is standard tarot size. Two and three quarter inches wide. By four, just under four and three quarter inches high. So for cardstock, the Trick or Treat Tarot is pretty standard. The Wellen stock, very flexible. Not very thick. The Halloween card stock feels thicker. It's definitely stiffer, but we know it's not thicker because they're basically the same size when you compare the decks, but it just feels stiffer to me, although quite flexible still. So the Trick or Treat Tarot doesn't have any borders. The Halloween Tarot does. 
So depending on your preference, you may like one style over the other. And we'll start with the Major Arcana and the Fool. I love this. I love this little guy in a ghost costume with his little cat. And this is a very traditional Rider Waite style fool. The Magician. Both very similar in keeping with the Rider Waite Smith. However, with the Halloween Tarot, his tools are the typical tools that a magician would use, where on this side, they're more traditionally Rider Waite Smith. The High Priestess. The Empress. I love this. <laughs> I love that this is a this is a mother. She's you know she's got her her kids, her baby. You know she's a kangaroo costume, which implies motherhood. That's a brilliant card. The emperor. The Hierophant. The Lovers. There will be those who recognize these two. I love how Dracula is coming through the window after her. I'm not sure that that's love, <laughs> but it's still quite a cute card. The Chariot. Strength. This looks Beauty and the Beast-ish to me. And obviously this is, you know, circus with a lion handler. The Hermit. It's Matt Professor here in his lab. The Wheel of Fortune. Throwing out candies everywhere. He doesn't look too happy here, does he? <laughs> Justice. A hanged man. Death. Temperance. The Devil. I think it's interesting that both cards depict the devil as female. The tower. He's just flipped the switch here and created all that chaos. Well, this seems a much busier card to me, and yet it still says the tower. The star.
the moon. She's got her barrel full of apples here. Interesting. The sun. They both have sunflowers. Judgment. This one, if you compare that to the Fool, you see it's the same little boy, but here he's just, we presume, starting out on his journey. His little pumpkin bucket is empty, and here it's packed full of candy, and he's looking quite pleased with himself, isn't he? I love that. You see the, the full circle there. If you compare the Halloween tarot, the fool in the world, they there's definitely no progression here necessarily. The only things that we're seeing the same really are the cat. So moving into the minor arcana, starting with the wands. Or the imps in the Halloween tarot. And the two. This is quite grim, isn't it? The three. Both give quite a sense of joy and celebration, don't they? Five. They both stay pretty true, mostly, to the Rider Waite Smith. Six. Seven. Whack a mummy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh boy. <laughs> the eight. The nine. The ten. And both of them depict this hunchback. Very interesting. It makes you wonder if the trick-or-treat tarot, if some of the images were inspired by this one. The page of wands. I love this. Oh, he's so cute. What a great costume. The night. The queen. And the king. into the cups. I love this goblet. I used to have goblets like this and I would host Halloween parties and oh, it was so much fun. The two of cups. Romeo and Juliet forever. And yet what they're drinking here is yeah. 
poison. <laughs> Interesting. The Three of Cups. I love these. Three witches around the cauldron. That's brilliant. And the Three Ghosts. The Four of Cups. He doesn't look too impressed, does he? Neither does he. That's proper Four of Cups. Five of Cups. And again, we see here very traditional right away Smith imagery with the spilled cups here and yet two cups there that are totally fine. We don't really get that in this card. The Six of Cups. Lots of yummy choices here. Again, you're not really seeing that imagery here. Seven of Cups. The Eight of Cups. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that in the Halloween Tarot that the suit of cups has been changed to the suit of ghosts. I just looked at that and thought, wait a minute. <laughs> and the nine. She looks quite chuffed, doesn't she? And the ten of cups. Oh, I love that. I just love this, the Wizard of Oz. And they look so proud of themselves, don't they? So defiant and determined. The page. The night. That's a natural shadow in the card, too. That's not my lighting. The queen. Oh, I hear the bean. He's on the move. We might expect a visit any minute here. And the king. Moving into the swords. Or, in the Halloween Tarot, the suit of bats. The two. I love how he's sitting on a tombstone here. The three. The Four of Swords. Sitting in his coffin. Standing in his coffin, I should say. Oh, hello. Hello. Here you are. Careful. There's a candle there. You want to be careful there, buddy. You're not allowed to get underneath my camera. Okay, sorry. Moving on to the five. And the six. I love this. <laughs> It's not the tunnel of love, is it, <laughs> that they're going into? Oh. The seven of swords. The eight. The nine.
the 10. Oh, he's back again. Back again. The page. Look at this with his plague mask on. <laughs> oh, the night. Ninja. The queen. And the king. And moving into the pentacles or the pumpkins in the Halloween tarot. The two. The three. Four. Five of Pentacles. Six. Seven. Deville, isn't it? The Dalmatians. The Nine. Elvira. The Ten. The Page. The night. The queen. And finally, the king of pentacles. So we're going to start with the Halloween tarot and see how it shuffles. As some of you know, I don't do a full riffle shuffle because I inevitably bend my cards. These are a little stiff, as I mentioned earlier, but they're okay. They're a little slippery, but not too bad. That's the Halloween Tarot. Trick or treat tarot. I'm expecting these to be very typical for Llewellyn, and they are. In fact, I even I would find it easy to do a riffle shuffle with these. And I struggle due to my arthritis. Are definitely more slippery but very easy to shuffle so my thoughts on the Halloween tarot this was a fantastic deck when it came out it was one of the first decks that I owned that was not a traditional original Rider Waite Smith it was one, one of the first different decks that I owned and I absolutely loved it and I still like it but it's not one that I reach for anymore
the Trick or Treat Tarot. This is a recent addition to my collection. I love the fact that it has no borders. I love how it shuffles. It's a fun deck. It's colorful. I really, really love this deck a lot. And I'm looking forward to using it a lot as we get closer to Halloween or Samhain. What do you think of these decks? Do you have either one of them in your collection? Have you been thinking about buying either one of them? What did you think of the cards that you saw in the flip through? I'd really love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Please share them in the comments below. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. If you found this video useful at all, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so that you get notified anytime I upload a new video. There will be one more part to this series. It will be the Trick or Treat Tarot versus the Jack-O-Lantern Tarot, which is this one. The other one I did was the Halloween Tarot versus the Jack-O-Lantern. So I'll be comparing these two next. And I'll be linking all of these videos so that you'll be able to flip from one to the other quite easily. Thank you again for joining me today. Have a lovely day. See you soon. Bye-bye.